Hello, I'm Robin Henning, and welcome to another Exchange Life Nugget of Truth. Are you a big picture person, or are you a detail person? You know, I work with a big picture person, but I happen to be more of a detail person. So whenever he shares a vision, I'm immediately breaking it down into detailed pieces. Now, imagine that you're living in Egypt, you're an Israelite, you're told that you need to be ready, pack up your stuff, be ready to go, tr ready to travel, mostly by foot to the land of Israel. There's no boarding passes, there's no airplanes, there's no buses, there's no cars, you're walking it. Maybe you're lucky you got a donkey, but you gotta hightail it out of there and start your journey only to find that you're being chased by the army of Egypt. Now, would you be cheering Moses on or freaking out? Yeah, right, you'd be freaking out. You'd be like, dude, what are you doing to us? You brought us all the way out here only to die. But now you get to watch God show off as he parts the Red Sea and you walk through on dry, not wet, not muddy, but dry land. And then you get to watch him make the Red Sea come back down on top of your enemies and they all die. Their bodies are floating up to the beaches and you're like, holy shamoli. And you're like, yay, God. Now, how long are you gonna bask in that miracle? I mean, you would think that would be enough evidence for them to be like, God can do anything for us. We're good. We're good. He's got us. But soon somebody realizes, hey, um, how are we going to feed like around a million bazillion people? And by the way, where are we going to get water to drink? See, food and water are pretty basic details. I would have been like, oh, uh, how are we going to do this? This is not going to be easy. So instead of just asking God, who just delivered them from their enemies, Israelites grumbled and complained and contemplated turning around. Let's go back to Egypt where we had stew pots full of food and we had water. We had, it was great. We're by the Nile. We had plenty of water. They didn't realize that they were stating that they preferred food with bondage instead of freedom following God. Now, what's my real point here? You see, faith takes the next step, believing that God's going to provide all along the way, all that we need. It's a scarcity mindset that manifests in grumbling and complaining and giving into a spirit of fear. It expresses contempt and unbelief that God's going to make a way, that God's going to provide. How are we going to do this? This is impossible. We can't do this. Nevertheless, he's told us, hey, this is what I want you to do next. You know, I'm as guilty as anyone for slipping into this, what I call Eeyore mode. You know, I have to admit that I would have been right there with them early on saying, uh, are we going to do this, that, and the other thing? This is nuts. This is insane. This is never going to work. You see, God's solutions. Would anybody have come up with, well, God's going to part the Red Sea and then drown all our enemies? If you had floated that one out there and said, this is how God's going to do it, everybody would be like, you're insane. What are you smoking? See, God's solutions are rarely visible to us and I'm preaching to myself here too you know he knows exactly what we're going to need when we're going to need it and by the way he's already got a solution in place just waiting for us all we have to do is ask in faith believing that he's going to make the way we'll receive our instructions then and then we have to step out in faith and obey those instructions it's look beloved I know it's easy for me to say this and I know that in the moment when life's waves, which are very real, are crashing around us and that wind is blowing, that storm was real that Peter was out walking on the water to Jesus. He was getting wet, his hair was being blown around, he was doing the impossible. And as soon as he was looking at anything but Jesus, he sank. Our focus has to be on our Savior who has already overcome every possible problem that we could face. Beloved, God is the God of the big picture and the God of the details. Nothing that we need escapes his attention. So instead of freaking out or grumbling and complaining, we simply need to ask God 
and then to provide, to make the way, and then to show us his solution and give us the faith and the strength to step out and walk in that faith path, knowing he's going to make the way, knowing he's going to do the incredible. There's a really good chance that his solution is something we never would have thought of. So, beloved, I don't know what you're facing. I know what I'm facing, but God's good. He knows the solution he's already got in place for us. So I hope you'll just simply ask. Ask and believe. Ask in faith. He's going to make the way. Take that step of faith. Walk with him in the freedom that is ours in Christ Jesus. I hope this encourages you. I hope you have a blessed week in Jesus. We'll see you next time.